So now we're going to talk about intubation supplies. So I have picked three tubes that I believe are close in the size that we want to get for our patient. Um, we don't expect you to be able to pick out the exact right size initially, but we do want you to have three tubes at your station that you kind of have eyeballed and think are going to be pretty close. Uh, so I went with an eight and then I got an eight and a half and a seven and a half. You want to have one below and one above the size you think is going to work. I have already pressure checked them, so I inflated the cuffs and let them sit for a little bit, kept them covered in paper towels so they don't get dirty. Um, so now we need to decide which uh, one is going to be the best. So I'm going to start with the one that I like, which is the 8, and I'm going to measure first for diameter. So there's two places we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to cover the end of my tube with this paper towel because I don't want to contaminate it since it has to go in her trachea. And I'm going to see how the width measures up to the space between her nares right here. So this is just a common little trick. Um, and it, it looks like it might be slightly big there. This can be deceiving. Some animals uh, this trick doesn't work too well for. So a better way after getting an idea with that is to actually palpate the trachea. So I'm gonna find this big kind of boxy structure right here um, on her throat, and that's the larynx. And I don't wanna use that to measure because it's much bigger than her actual trachea, but it's easy to find. Once you find that, if you just drop your fingers caudally of it, then you'll feel the rings of the trachea, and then you're feeling the actual two. And I think an eight is a good fit. We may even be able to do an eight and a half, but we'll start with an eight and see how that fits. <clears throat> the next thing I need to measure for is length. So I wanna make sure they don't put this tube in too far. So <clears throat> my, um, my points of reference are gonna be uh, incisors to the um, cranial process of the sternum, which is known as the manubrium. And I can feel it right here. So again, I like to use my longest tube, which I think this one is. I'm gonna cover the end so it doesn't get all grody up against her. And I'm gonna actually hold the tip of it right to the top of the manubrium. And I'm gonna hold it there, because if they move a little bit, you'll lose where you're at. Then I just want to follow the gentle curve of her neck, and I'm just going to lift and see where we're at. And we're at the ID, so it's about 30. So we have uh, 28, 29, and she was right about here, so that's going to be 30 centimeters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I want to keep that in mind. I want to know exactly where I want to go. And the reason for that is at the point of the manubrium, we have the tracheal bifurcation which is where the trachea splits into two bronchioles, go, uh, bronchi, excuse me, going down to each side of the lungs, the left and the right. And I wanna make sure my tube doesn't go down one side only or sit at that bifurcation and doesn't oxygenate them appropriately or give them the breath, uh, the gas that they need. <clears throat> so when I place this tube, I'm gonna make sure I tie it into where her incisors touch right here at the eye on the ID. Okay. 